If you're an officer in California, you probably know that laws have been passed establishing a decertification process for peace officers. As a former officer and a current trainer, I've seen firsthand the uncertainty and apprehension this new law has sparked among the people I know and work with. I aim to unravel the complexities and real-world implications of this legislation in order to truly comprehend the practical effects of Senate Bill 2. I'm engaging directly with members of POST, the organization responsible for implementing this new process, but the journey begins among officers from different departments at various points in their career. We're not just exploring a change in a law. It's an examination of the repercussions on the individuals who enforce it and the communities they serve. What's your understanding of who POST is? Like, who are the people that work there and, and, and put together these training mandates and coordinate these programs? I, you think it's just civilians that just get hired on. As you just start going along, you start talking, that's not the case. It's usually some people that have like prior law enforcement experience and stuff. But unless you kind of get involved in that, I don't think you really know that. I have thought of it just like he has. I mean, sometimes you get retired officers that have been out of it for a little bit. Are they staying up to date as far as how things are for us? So in addition to the retired officers, I also think that Post goes out and they pick people that are subject matter experts in a particular field. Largely everybody's right. It's a, it's a combination of civilian staff. Um, predominantly the folks who run the kinds of programs that you are probably the most familiar with. Those primarily are law enforcement consultants. They're not all retired. We have a number of staff like myself who came over sort of mid-career. Uh, you know, we're sensitive to the fact that some of us have been out of the game for, for a minute and we need to be as contemporary as we can about, you know, how does this affect folks who are working right now? And so I think POST does a pretty good job of trying to get people who are current to come in and, and talk about some of those issues. Do you have or have you had a relationship with POST during the course of your career, whether it's three or four years or, or 20 years? Other than a couple phone calls, uh, I haven't had a whole lot of interaction with any members from POST. I think of uh, the Academy. And then graduating the Academy, you know, it's POST certified. I think today's the first Day that I've actually put a face to post. Um, I went to the RTO class and that was my first introduction really into the um, into post. I had an opportunity to see exactly the, the in some of the inner workings of post and how post goes through and selects people from different areas to help work together on a project. It's mostly like getting post certified in the academy and then I go to post to complete trainings but I've never had like contact with people that work for POST. Have you heard of peace officer decertification and certification? Uh, so when it first came out, it was like, I heard a lot. There was, they, this is like the beginning stages of taking away qualified immunity. I heard all, everything from that all the way to that it's just a way to take away our certificate so we can no longer be peace officers. You don't really spend a whole lot of time looking into it. You just hear what's being said amongst each other. So what I heard was obviously that it would deal with decertifying us and the other thing is making it public to the community of who we are. What fears or concerns uh, might do you have related to police decertification? What access does the public have um, to, the, to the complaints? Um, not just the ones that get uh, actually decertified uh, or suspended, um, but just in general. There are some people in the community that Regardless of how well you try to handle a call, they are just not happy with their service. And there are times where complaints come through. That is an unnerving when you're out working and they don't want to go out and go do proactive work because it's putting them more at risk. You're like, okay, I'm not going to go out and look for things or pull over cars just in case, like, what if we make a mistake? And then we're going to be held not only through IA, we have to worry about posts clearing us as well. We're starting to unravel the complexities of decertification through the eyes of those it impacts most directly. Next, our investigation broadens. I'll engage with post executives and board members and continue our dialogue with officers. I'm hoping the varied perspectives will illuminate not just the new law, but its profound implications for the community and law enforcement alike. For additional information and resources related to certification and decertification, access the POST website at the link below.